Okay, so I'm a student who in engineering school studied about two hours a day and I managed to graduate with A's. And I'm not flexing or anything. I just want to say that probably one of the biggest reasons I could do this was the skill of time management. So in this video, I want to give you a couple tips how to be an expert time management time manager that I learned from reading tons of books and doing tons of experimentation. Because here's why I think this is my theory on why time management is so important. Because if we don't manage our time, time will manage us. So what does that mean? It means we have this essentially a baseline of activities that we do naturally. So for example, you might be someone who if just given like if, if, <laughs> if you were left alone, you would scroll on your phone all day. Right. And here's the thing. There's a fact you need to know. 95% of our day is run up. Uh, this is according to science. 95% of our day is run by the subconscious mind. So this is the mind that reacts through habits. Right. So most of our day, you might realize just happens automatically. You wake up, you go brush your teeth, you go do the same things every single day. You live like the same day every single day. And that's because we actually don't have a lot of conscious willpower to actually change our days. So if we don't manage our time, what we do is we wait for motivation. We wait like, OK, I'm going to wait till I get motivated to study, then I'm going to do it. We don't consciously think this, but we just lie around until we feel inspired to get up and go study. So actually what we need to do is we need to override our subconscious mind and make the decisions for him. I think of it as like you have this default programming in your day and you have to go actually go in there and change the hard wiring so that you have a different default system. That's that's the benefit of time management because, OK, I'll, I'll go through the tips. But one other thing as well is there's something called decision fatigue. If you don't manage your time, if you just let your time be loose, throughout the day, you don't plan it, you don't put any time management principles, you don't use any of these hacks that I'm going to talk about, then every single second in the day, you're making a decision. You wake up, should I study now? Or should I not? You eat breakfast, should I study now? Or should I not? Should I study now? Or should I not? Should I study now? Or should I not? Should I should I should I should I should I should? You're making decisions every single microsecond of the day. And we experience something called decision fatigue, where if we make too many decisions throughout the day, we get fatigued and we can no longer make decisions. So you might notice in the morning, you're a little bit more, you know, you have better willpower. You do better habits than at night. It's because your ability to make decisions starts to decline. I'm, I'm going to go through some tips here real quick. Okay. So by the way, it's not entirely to do with time management. Partly it is to do with mental health because your nervous system might get, might see studying as a threat. And that's why you get fatigued. That's why you can't study. So it's not 100% a time management issue, but time management 100% is an important part of it. So it's, it's two, two parts to it. Okay, so the first tip I want to give you here, I'm not sure if this is going to be a controversial take or what, but this is probably one of the things that helped me the most in university um, and even afterwards is work to a timetable. So what do I mean by this? So in, in high school, this is the last time I can think that we had timetables. You had a timetable get to class at seven, get to school at 7.30, then maths, then physics, then, then chemistry, then biology, then lunch. And what happens is your entire day becomes automatic. Your entire day becomes like you're a robot, just executing, 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 executing. Now you might think like, oh, I don't want to be so productive, bro. I don't want to like plan every minute of my day. But the reality is, like I said, if you don't plan every minute of your day, you're going to resort, resort to those automatic behaviors. So I'm going to tell you how I did this. So in university, let's say, for example, I would just take my classes and I would put them onto Google Calendar. I just used Google Calendar. And then I would literally plan when I was going to study the study blocks I had. I literally planned when I was going to eat. I planned the events I went to, the sports I went to, the times I would exercise. I was going to meet up with someone and I would literally just quickly put the meeting in my calendar. Right. So what I'm trying to say is work to a calendar because at first it's going to be difficult. At first, what I realized is you're probably going to you're going to plan the perfect day. You're going to plan the perfect week and you're going to miss a lot of things. It's like, OK, I have to do my study session now and you're going to procrastinate. But the mindset I have is this. As long as it as it makes you more productive than you are now, it's a it's, a, it's an improvement. So I used to think, oh, if I don't follow my timetable perfectly, I'm a failure. But the reality is. 
even following my timetable like 50% was an improvement to what I was already doing. So make a timetable, literally plan every minute of your day. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can literally put a block that's just like free time or something. But plan every minute of your day. And after a while, especially if you have classes, you can plan, stack things around the classes. After a while, it'll become automatic. You will leave biology class and you'll automatically start walking to the library to do your physics homework or whatever. So work to a timetable because another thing is stress largely comes from having to make decisions. You sit there stressed for 30 minutes. Should I study? Should I not study? Should I study? Should I not study? If you had have just studied, you wouldn't be stressed, right? So a large part of our stress comes from having to make decisions because in, in, in reality, there's only one thing you can do at every single moment of the day. Right, we only have limited attention. So in theory, why would you get stressed? Because it's like, okay, look, I have an assignment due, that's why I'm stressed. Then work on the assignment. That's all I can do in this moment, right, for example. So a large reason we get stressed is because we have to make decisions all day. So when you make those decisions ahead of time, then when you're in a block where you don't have to study, you don't get stressed because you can fully relax. You're like, okay, look, this is my rest period. I haven't put myself to study. I'm studying in an hour, right? And when you're studying, you don't question it. You sit down and you study. So a large part of your stress will go away if you do this. Now, like I said, it is, it is going to be difficult to study because the block is going to approach and you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to study. I can't believe I said this as my study block. But if you can get to the mindset where you just turn up, right? And you don't pressure yourself too much about how you do. Over time, you start to change your timetable a little bit. You improve it. You make it, you change it around. Um, but the hardest part, like I said, is just turning up. When you actually start to turn up and you start following this timetable and it becomes automatic, your time gets managed, right? I've gone through periods where I don't use the timetable. And every time I come back to using it, it literally, I'm like, why did I give this up? It was so difficult. I've lived lives where I'm, I'm more like free, just kind of like doing whatever. And those were always worse. Okay, the next time management principle I wanna give you, I talk about this a lot because I think it's so important. It's called Parkinson's Law, it's got a name. So the simplest way I can explain this is if you have an assignment due in one month, somehow you will always be working on that assignment up until like the morning is due. This is Parkinson's Law in action. Basically the amount of time you allocate to a task, it will take you that long. So when you tell yourself tomorrow, I'm gonna to do my English essay, you somehow finish at like 11.59 p.m. It's because you gave yourself the whole day to do it. But instead, let's say for example, at, at midday, you have to go somewhere for the rest of the day. You would bust out that assignment in the morning. You would get it done. So the task compresses to fit the time allocated towards it. That's Parkinson's law. So how do we do this? Um, how do we apply this law? So one way to do it is to do artificial deadlines. For example, you have an assignment due in a month, you give yourself a one week deadline, a two week deadline, a three week deadline, and that can work, it can work. But what I found with that is you would just, you would be more flexible. You'd be like, oh, I've got my fake deadline this, this Monday, but hey, it's a fake deadline, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just go out today. I'll just, I'll just sleep today, right? So artificial deadlines, they can help, and I did them. Um, especially I would break down an assignment into weekly things. Um, if I had like 10 workshops to do, I would split it up. So it's like this one's due in three days and three days and three days. That can help you. But another thing I like to do is I like to force myself to have less time to study. So this might seem counterintuitive, like, wait, don't we want to study more? But let me explain. So I would literally, I would put activities into my day. So I would compress time, right? For example, I would tell myself that in the, for example, in the afternoon, I would say like, look, I'm going to relax in the afternoon. I'm not going to study that's already compressing time. Because you wake up in the morning and instead of thinking like, oh, I have all day to study, I can just study in the afternoon. Instead you're thinking, oh wait, in the afternoon I'm, I'm not gonna study. So I've got less time. And it puts you under that pressure. Another thing is I would schedule in my hobbies. So even during exam seasons, I was exercising. Even during exam seasons, I was meeting my friends. I was organizing things, right? I was go organizing activities to go to. Because I knew, oh damn, I have to go to an activity at six. I've only got three hours to do this. And it would put me under that time pressure. Um, another thing 
was this, this, this one actually helped me wake up early and it helped me get out of that house early because I always struggled with getting out of the house. If I had to leave the house in an hour, somehow it would take me an hour to get ready. So what I would do is I would organize something with my friend in the morning. I would organize to play a sport with him. I would organize to meet him sometime early in the morning and that would get me out of bed. That would get me out of the house or I'd promise to meet my friend for a class or something. That would force me to go there. So use friends as accountability. That's kind of an unrelated tip, but yeah. And we think we shouldn't do these things because we should be studying. But in reality, if you do this, it compresses the time and it actually makes you study better. Like I've, I've, ex I've experimented with only studying in the morning or only working in the morning. So I'm like, okay, once the morning is done, I'm done working. And honestly, it's a really good way to live because you get all your stuff done in the morning. So for the rest of the day, you feel a lot more light because you've done your most important tasks in the morning. And actually this relates to the next tip that I wanna give you, where one to two hours is what you should be focusing on every single day. Now I'm not saying only do one to two hours a day, but what I'm trying to say here is one to two hours can get you like 80% of your day's productivity done. And here's why. First of all, there's a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. I've got it here. He talks about how some of the best artists in the world, some of the best creatives in the world only work for about three to four hours per day at maximum output. And that's because our focus is limited. Now, it doesn't mean we can only study for four hours a day, but it means the longer you focus in the day, the worse your focus gets. So the mindset I like to have is I aim for one to two hours a day of solid, good study, solid, good work. And that's what I focus on. The rest of the day, if it happens, great. If not, I've got that one to two hours. So here's what, here's what I do. First of all, those one to two hours are gonna be the most productive. Second of all, I put them in a time during my day when I'm the most energetic and the most mentally able, let's say. So for me, often that's in the morning. In the morning, I wake up and I do meditation. And immediately after that, before I've eaten a lot of food, before my energy starts to dip in the afternoon, I find this is the period of time when I'm the most productive, when my mind is the most able to do work, when I'm the most creative. So I will milk those, those one to two hours. Honestly, one to two hours in the morning for me is worth like four hours in the afternoon. And I get another gain in energy around the evening time. So around the evening time and around the early morning, those are the two periods <coughs> where I really put my focus blocks around. So one to two hours during those high leverage periods where you're really taking advantage for one to two hours, you're, you're working like a lion. This is what I think is a quote from the Val Ravi Kant. Work like a lion, not like a donkey. Where you really sprint, you work hard during those periods, you push yourself. And the other thing is one to two hours a day is very sustainable. It's very doable. Sometimes we, we wanna do like six hours a day. And the problem is we'll do six hours and the next day we'll do zero. And then six and zero, 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 four, six, six, zero, 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 two, two, zero, zero. But a consistent baseline of one to two hours is very achievable, it's very good. And the other thing is, let's say for example, you've got, uh, let me just check my notes here. Yeah, the most needle moving task, by the way. So you do the most, urgent, most hardest task of your day. So for example, for me, 2020 lockdown, I had a subject called electrical device modeling. And I remember the first thing I would do for two hours, for one to two hours, as soon as I woke up, was I would tackle a lecture of that subject because it was very difficult. And I got so much done in that one to two hours. That was literally all I needed for that subject, to be honest. So daily, one to two hours a day, highest energy part of, part of your day. And the other thing I wanna mention here, is let's say you've got a side project you're working on or you wanna do something on the side, you wanna start your YouTube channel. In university, in, I, was do, I was growing my, when I first started my YouTube channel, I was in engineering school. I had to do multiple very difficult subjects and I still grew my YouTube channel to about 30,000 subscribers in that time. And all I really did for my YouTube channel was about one hour per day, that's it. One hour per day is real, can really push you so far. One hour per day on the right work can really push you far. So if you've got some like hobby, 
something you're interested in doing, some side project. You don't need 12 hours a day. One hour per day can get you very, very far in this thing. So that's what I did. I prioritized growing my YouTube channel. I would wake up first thing in the morning and I would work on it. Right? And then the rest of my day would be for, for school, for engineering. So one to two hours per day, that's, my, that's the mindset I want to give you. Very, very focused work, very hard work. You can get a lot of work done. So that's it. Those are the three principles I want to get you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But otherwise, go check out this video now. Adios.